You are now tuned into WKNJ 90.3 FM, and this is the Garden State Hip Hop Hour. Kill Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Garden State Hip Hop Hour. You know what it is. Every Monday, one hour, straight Jersey music, all the sounds from the state. Rapping for the state, and today we got a very special guest, aka Mr. Number One Song of Tri State. Let's get it. The Unicorn, Killer Kurt Cobain. Yeah, 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 we in the building. What's good, my guy? What's good? I appreciate you coming through. Of course, of course. So you saw, we were playing some of your throwbacks. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, you did, you did some good research on that, too. Hell yeah. So how did the style change? Because, you know what I'm saying, that first song, you, you were really just freestyling, like regular rapping, yeah, but then yeah. now you got the whole Jersey Club. Um, all right, so when I was first, first fucking with it, like, me and my me and my squad, 1-5-1-Fever one one gang, was like, actually, a, like a, a gang in East Orange, you know what I mean? So we wasn't really heavy on rap. So when we first started rapping, we was literally just screaming out the hood over beats. So we'll get like a trap beat. We from down the hill, down the hill, like that, right? And um, we went to the Meadowlands Fair one time. You know, you know the Meadowlands Fair? Yeah, right? yeah. And they got this big ass like karaoke booth. And we was like, deep as hell. We go up in this karaoke booth and we just start chanting. We from down there, like rapping on like whatever random instrumentals was coming on. And um, we was joking, out just having fun. So afterwards they gave us a CD. Yeah. And we forgot about it for like weeks, you know what I mean? And one day I my caddy, my man like, yo, put that CD in for mom when we was all acting up at the Meadowlands. So we put it in, we like, yo, this shit sound good. We just riding through the hood. So we parked the car, we playing it, everybody in the hood like, bruh, if you go to a real studio and record that shit, that shit'll be fire. And I ain't know nothing about real studios or nothing like that. So when I first got into it, I mean, I was on my, on my gangster shit. But at the same time, like, we was partying heavy. And so like, I had a lot of house music influence from the skating ring. Club music, because when you go to the parties, that's all they play is club music, right? So one day I'm like, yo, why do I don't make a song out of club music? <laughs> like, why? It just clicked. You know what I mean? Like, and um, I think, you know, Lil Man was popping at the time. Uh, Wawa was popping at the time. And that might have been, and DJ K Swift from, from Baltimore. So I'm like, I'm about to rap on one of these shits. But uh, nobody from Jersey would make me a beat. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But it was at the early stages though. It wasn't really a lot of Jersey club yeah. producers. You feel me? So I had, I, like, luckily I linked up with DJ K Swift from Baltimore. She's legendary. That was a toted. And, and we did toted. So I, and once again, I was just fucking around with it, just you know, trying to be creative, be fun, whatever. And when I uploaded it to YouTube, and back then if you got ten thousand views, you was popping. That shit just started <laughs> buzzing crazy. I'm like, what the fuck? That was the first video I had uploaded to that YouTube channel. And I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> you gotta get this red button. Oh, oh, we can't curse. My bad. Yeah. And so um, after that, I think I did another one. I did Feel It in the Air, which was a DJ Blackstar record. Mm -hmm. And it just started taking off for us after that, you know what I mean? But once again, it was mad difficult to get original club beats made because there wasn't that many Jersey club producers back then. To keep it a buck with you, Jersey club wasn't even really a genre. Yeah. It was calling everything Baltimore club at that point. So, um,. I was doing that, and I mean, the music was popping, but I was really into fashion. So I kind of fell back from the music. Yeah, you did Coogee, right? Yeah, yeah. I was designing for Coogee brand. I was working with all these other vintage brands. I think, like, E-Tonic was up there. FUBU was up at their office. And I was just killing on the fashion wave. And then, um, you know what I mean? I was on a panel. I tell the story all the time, but we had to pick <laughs> the top 10 artists of 2017. Mm -hmm. And I'm just sitting there thinking to myself, like, yo, why Jersey not popping yet? Like, we need somebody who got this total package. You feel me? Some niggas got bars, they don't got the look. Some niggas got the bread for marketing, but their music is trash. <laughs> Some niggas got hot music, but they can't market themselves. You feel me? It was just like, yeah. I kept seeing all these missing pieces, and I'm thinking to myself, like, who got the total package? I'm like, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> the answer was? I, I mean, I, I, I was just like, I'm, I'm just I'm, I'm throw, my, throw my card out there. I'm see, I'm gonna see what it do. <laughs> So at the beginning of 2018, I'm talking about like top of 2018, like January 2018, I throw out um, Heartbroken. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, that was the first one I think yeah, I saw. Yeah, and Heartbroken started like getting my buzz up like back on the music tip. So I'm like, all right, this shit might rock. Then um, 
I did Nautica, which was like a straight rap record, but it was like on some vintage fashion shit. Yeah, I saw that video. That shit started picking up for me. Then I mean, Nautica, the company reached out for me to do content. Oh wow! Yeah, I was up in the office and everything <laughs> like corporate. Wow. So I'm like, so now I'm really seeing like, all right, fashion popping, music popping. I'm kind of run with both, whatever, whatever. And then when I dropped this Tom, that shit just went. Number one song in the top shit. Yeah. <laughs> Straight to it, yeah. That's dope, and you are a whole package. So, what do you feel like that you don't think your music is out there as much? Because you got the fashion, you got mm-hmm. the look, you got a unique sound. Yeah. You got like the creativity behind you. And I mean, because I think I was talking to uh, I don't know exactly his name, but Purple Label G Four. That's my man. Yeah, yeah, fuck with G Four. Okay, yeah. And he was telling me like when he talks to DJs, they say Jersey got to put out better music or whatever. Yeah. But like when you look at your sound and your whole uh, vibe and your whole style, mm-hmm. it's right there. Yeah. Facts. So what is stopping it from getting to the next from level? Lower? Well. A lot of, I would say, like, a lot of the Jersey dudes that are getting those looks, you they got, like, labels behind them and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Me and, like, everybody I work with, we 100% independent. I don't got no man. I, like, I handle everything myself from the bookings to contracts. Like, I draw up my own contracts. I handle my own distribution as far as, you know, getting into these digital sites, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. So it's like, you know, I've had offers. But they want crazy percentages because you need the numbers for leverage. Yeah. You know what I mean? They want to get their cut. Exactly. And so... I just be look like I look the same way I did with fashion, right? When I was working at Coogee Brand, I could take whatever they gave me, but when I started like moving my own, I was making a killing. Yeah. Same thing with music. Like it might start off slow, but I know a little bit about business. You feel me? So mm-hmm. I know I could take it there independently to where I can get more leverage. Now, if I would have signed way back when I had heartbroken, I'd probably be doing hundred thousand per drop. You know what I'm saying? Cause <laughs> they got they put the machine behind us. Yes. But what would I be seeing off of that? And, and, that makes sense, yeah. and would I have even been able to make it's time? Because, you know, they, they kind of constrict your creativity. So I was going to say, you want creative control over yourself. Exactly. Because if I, if I would have, like, gave them creative control back during the heartbroken era, I might not have been able, been able to release this time. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because they might have been like, oh, nah, you don't get that. Uh, we, we don't want to pay for that sample clearance. So we don't want to, Yeah, you know, it's more on what they want to do. Exactly. You know what I mean? So I'm really just sticking to my own formula right now because what we've accomplished in 11 months has been more than what artists that I know that are signed are able to do even being signed. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of signed artists that we don't know, really know is signed. They be on the shelf. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I'll I be, I be at the Hot 97, who's next showcase. I'll be like, like J. Cole. He was signed for a long time. Yeah, like, it's a lot of industry politics, and I really don't want to get into that because the way the game is changing is really becoming, we're more, as the artists, we're more empowered now. Mm-hmm. So I don't. Oh, yeah. This, we live in this era where you could, the whole world can see you. Yeah. They don't need someone to put you out there. We got the empowerment. So it's like the way that I'm climbing up. The, like the right eyes is on me. You feel me? They like they watching, but it's like I'm gonna show and prove so that they like I right, will get behind that officially. You know? What yeah, I mean? and like a lot of rappers signed today. A lot of them we see it, they come with issues. You yeah, see, we see it all the time. Like oh, so and so beat someone up. The mother exactly. Like, like you, you. I see what you're doing. You had the whole sauces on with the autism. You uh-huh. work with the children. Like you don't seem to have like a problematic issue. So it's you know that's what I'm saying. The package is there. Yeah. Like, you help out kids, like, you work with these children. I saw you was, you were in East Orange cleaning yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're out here doing these good things that just make the package that more complete. Yeah, but there's another issue with that, too. Um, so I was, like, I was trying to shop myself for, like, a major uh, radio interview, right? Mm-hmm. Now, like I said, I've been meeting these people. They be inviting me up to these people. Like, the same way you invited me up here, they be like, yo, come up, do this, this, that, and throw, like, smaller segments, right? Yeah. I'm like, bro, I need the big segment because we got the biggest song in the tri-state right now. And they like... Yeah, but you gotta like really represent yourself the way you represent yourself. Now I mean, like, let them know where you from. They want me to be on like the more controversial tip with the oh, gangs and the yeah, guns, yeah. this, that, and the third. And I'm like, everybody in Jersey know where I'm from and they know what I do. You feel me? But I don't want to exacerbate that lane just to get on. And, and and they explained this to me. They said an interview about positivity and you being an entrepreneur will not get the same ratings about if you is. If you have an interview about what gang you from and who you beefing with and, and that, this, that, and the third. You feel me? Yeah. And w- when they told me that, I understood what they were saying. But I'm like, bro, that's corny because if y'all, if y'all supposedly the marathon continue and Nipsey Hustle, this and that, then why wouldn't y'all want me up there representing the positive that we do out here? Like, why I got to get up there and be like, F that side from over here? Yeah. I'm not even off that no more. You feel me? Yeah, controversy sells, but like you just yeah. said, now everyone's talking about, you know, I want to be Nipsey, I want to do this for community. Exactly. But now you have somebody that's doing it, and it's like, oh, that's a problem for us because it's not going to sell. Exactly. And that's why rappers have a problem. Look at uh, Rolling Loud. It's like everyone's getting arrested down there. People are right. shooting. Like, why do they need to want to keep pushing this? They want you to sell your soul. Mm-hmm. If you get locked up, who cares? That, and, then, and then that's the second part about it. And then I'm looking at it like, all right, 
I come up on the station, I say this, this, that, and the third, I push that agenda, y'all push me out there. Now when I go to this town, I go to that town, I got an automatic problem with whoever feel like they from the other side. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? When I, I'm not even like that, I rock with every side. Anybody that know me from Jersey know there's not any neighborhood that I can't go in because of the way that I carry myself. Yeah, that video, you had everyone together. Yeah. You were, you know, community, just bringing exactly. together and trying to do something, you know? Yeah, and I feel like that's going to be the future of this wave anyway. Like, all, so many rappers that got shot in the past couple years, it's not even, like, you won't even bat an eye when a rapper get killed. Look that's at Young Boy. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't get hit, the girl did, but still, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They're shooting at him for what? For what? But they want to keep pushing that. Why not? You out here, like, that's amazing. Like, you really out here. Like, yeah. I see you're always helping like, that, that kid. I don't yeah, know yeah, what yeah. his name is. But in the whole sauces and things, so you even put your own little twist on it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's my thing. Like, I'm a, and I'm gonna keep it like that. Like, I'm gonna stay true to myself. Like I said, when you stay true to yourself, you're gonna prosper way more. It might take a little bit longer, but you're gonna prosper more. And, and Jersey need that. Like, you know how they say Jersey don't got an identity? Because there's certain sections, you know, they wanna say, I like Chirac. They wanna be this. They wanna this, that, and the third. And it's like, if you just stay true to yourself, our culture will eventually come to the forefront. You feel me? Houston culture wasn't always popular. All that driving slow yeah. and drills and all that, but they stay and they can go platinum in Houston alone. We can do that. We got enough people to go platinum, platinum in Jersey alone, but people don't cultivate their fans out here because they're not staying true to themselves. Yeah, you know what I mean. So I'm really pushing that agenda. You know what I mean, stay true to yourself, stay independent, push Jersey culture, and we're gonna be yeah. popular. And you just did the grill fest too. Yeah, so you're yeah. bringing that here too. Yeah, yeah. But you know, I, I, <laughs> back when I was trapping and everything, you know what I mean, I was always into the grills. We had grills back when we was teenagers, mm -hmm. and it wasn't really popular up here, but. That, that's just what we was on. So it's like, that's second nature to me, but people up here is just kind of getting into it. So I'm like, all right, let me help them get acclimated to it. Because I thought these little festivals and events that got themes to them. And when you, when you do shit that's, ish, that's creative like that, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? It make it much more interesting. So I just try, I'm keeping it just like that. Now, how do you keep getting inspired and motivated to do all these different things? Like there's only so much time in the day, you know? <laughs> Yo, and there's so many lanes you're doing right yeah. now. How do you just fill them all? Yeah, I'm gonna keep it a buck with you. I sleep about two hours a day. <laughs> you don't look like you sleep. You look well rested. You're energized. <laughs> I, I'll be on. I sleep about two hours a day, but I got I got a dope team with me. Like a lot of what I get accomplished can't be accomplished without a team. For for any artist, you feel me? You gotta have good people around you. So I got I got DJ Fade who produced this time, right? So he's a producer and a DJ. So that's a crazy combination for me right there. So we do a lot of legwork together. I got Nimi with me. I got Secret Society. Mm -hmm. So I got the girls the models, the the cameramen, and um, it's really about collaboration. And I, and I also work outside of my camp with other people, so I just collaborate with as many people as I can and keep it pushing. Yeah, that's dope. And how'd you decide to flip the drip too hard to bricks too hard? Like, how did you choose that beat? Or was it DJ he brought it to you? Because that was Fade too, right? No, nah, um, that was actually Ace Mula. Oh, that was Ace Yeah, Ace Mula, Mula yeah. Um, so, like I said, I work closely with a lot, of the, a lot of these club producers. So when Ace Mula was first flipping it, I'm sitting there like, bruh, we might <laughs> crazy on this, you know what I mean? And I, as soon as I heard it, I, like, drip too hard, bricks too, it went hand in hand. Yeah, yeah. It took me about five minutes to make that song. Okay. And keep it a buck oh, with you. Five <laughs> That's crazy. To keep it a buck with you, the reason why I didn't get a clean version, because to me that was a throwaway, because it was a remix of a, so I'm like, ah, right, yo, this bricks too hard. But when I put it out, it, it start catching. Yeah, you got the video for it. Yeah. And who does the create? Do you do come up with your videos yourself, or is that I do, a I do, I do, I do, I do. I come up with the, with the wardrobe for the video. Uh, scenery, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, yeah. And do you have a full project coming? Because it seems uh, yeah, like yeah. you drop songs. Like you drop the videos, you do the your song. Yeah, I'm doing. I'm doing a full. I got a couple projects. Like I, my my goal was to do like a three a three project, right? One which was straight club music, house music, dance, like a dance project. Mm -hmm. Then one strictly hip hop project, and then I was going to do a chopped and screwed EP where the whole thing is just chopped and screwed. Yeah. I rock with that wave too, but um. The first thing I'm gonna do is the house music club music project, so that'll be done super real soon. I got like one more song to do. Oh, that's official. And it's all like, is it flip songs or is it all just uh, all original? Ori all original, all original. Yeah. Oh, that's dope. And then what's after that? What's the next project? I see. I, see, <laughs> I, I like to say I got this is down the third. Yeah, you're... <laughs> but for some reason, I drop something and it take me here. Mm -hmm. So I, I really gotta play it by ear. I, I gotta see what the response is to the first project dropped, and then it'll it'll give me the climate for what to do after that. So, are you gonna represent for Jersey on Summer Jam? I saw you, you gonna be dropping talking. little things here yeah, and there. Just, listen, we 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 gonna be at Summer Jam. I can't even tell you what we gonna do, <laughs> but we gonna be there. It's gonna be a lot of Jersey club, Jersey culture turning up in there, and yeah, that's dope. We gonna put something together. But I appreciate you coming on the show. Hell yeah, thank you. So I would say, what do you got coming out next? You do shows? You got like you perform? You got I perform one time? Yeah, I did. I did SOBs. Um, what do we have coming up next? I got an art show in Newark. I forgot the location. 
but I'm performing. At, it's at the um at the Halsey Building uh, downtown Newark on Halsey Street. So I got a show there. It's, it's mad stuff. I got. I would have to look at my calendar. <laughs> <laughs> so do all your drives work. People find you. Unicorn one five one. Right? Yeah, man. Unicorn one five one on Instagram. That's that's the main thing I use is Instagram. So Unicorn one five one. Links for everything is in my bio. The name is Killer Kirk Cobain, aka the Unicorn. You know what it is, man. Feel me? I appreciate you coming on again. I, everything you do for your community is dope, not just the music. So oh, that's yes, what I yes. say. That I'm positivity thing is good here. Like I like it. Mm -hmm. I think that's the angle that should be pushed, and that really separates you from a lot of people. Oh, facts. That, that, that's exactly what we're pushing. We're gonna, we're gonna stay on that. So we're gonna play that verse too hard one more time. We're gonna Kill get it. out here. Let's get it. Unicorn. 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 Killer. Drip too hard, baby, why hate? Uh, Number one record in the tri-state. Uh, Unicorn, hop out the I-8. Shorty put the silky on vibrate. Drip too hard, help you slip going drip, cause my fit too hard. Gucci go yard, my neck on drip. Diamonds hitting too hard, killer. Drip too hard, big cup of codeine, I sip too hard. Trying to leave these streets, but I'm bullying with these bloods and these trips too hard.